For the first time in the world, a CRISPR-Cas9 based medical treatment has been approved in the UK. This gene editing treatment, called Cascavy, is now approved to treat two diseases, sickle cell anemia and beta thalassemia, both of which are painful, difficult to treat, and can result in death. Cascavy has the potential to change all of that. CRISPR-Cas9 is a relatively new gene editing technology. Cas9 is an enzyme, which is often called molecular scissors, as it can cut fragments of DNA. Scientists use a strand of RNA that complements the target DNA sequence to guide Cas9 towards that location, where Cas9 then cuts. Once this happens, researchers can add, delete, or modify that section of DNA. What makes CRISPR-Cas9 different from other gene editing tools is that it's highly precise, versatile, and comparatively simple. It's also not species-specific, so it can be used in pretty well any organism that has DNA to edit. In addition, it's also low cost compared to other tools in the gene editing scene. The discovery of CRISPR-Cas9 was so revolutionary that two of the scientists responsible for its discovery were awarded the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. It's not completely without controversy, though. The ability to edit genes this easily could definitely be used for malicious purposes. See our video on cyborgs for some examples. It can also cause unforeseen genetic mutations that can be passed on to the next generation. Some diseases are so serious, however, that we've decided it necessary to use CRISPR-Cas9 to treat them. Sickle cell anemia and beta thalassemia are genetic diseases. An error in the patient's DNA causes hemoglobin, the molecule that helps your blood carry oxygen and makes it red, to be formed incorrectly. In sickle cell anemia, the hemoglobin makes the blood cells take a sickle-like form, which clump up and clog blood vessels. In beta thalassemia, not enough hemoglobin is made, causing irregular heartbeats, misshapen bones, enlarged organs, and other issues. Though they can sometimes be cured with traditional bone marrow transplants, finding a compatible donor is very difficult. These diseases can be extremely painful and can cause serious complications like strokes and organ damage. On average in the UK, people living with beta thalassemia die at age 55, and those with sickle cell anemia die at age 40. The Cascavy treatment is pretty intensive. The patient has stem cells extracted from their bone marrow, which are then edited with CRISPR-Cas9. It targets a gene called BCL11A, which prevents the production of fetal hemoglobin, which is usually only made by fetuses. Healthy fetal hemoglobin is produced when BCL11A is neutralized. It both decreases the proportion of unhealthy hemoglobin and also inhibits the chemical processes that causes cell to sickle. The patient undergoes an intense chemotherapy process to prepare to have these stem cells reinfused. The healthy fetal hemoglobin then proliferates and improves oxygen circulation in the body. Access is a major ethical issue though. According to geneticist Simon Waddington, this treatment may not easily scale up to be able to provide treatments in low and middle income countries, since it requires the technology to obtain a patient's blood stem cells, deliver the genetic editor to these stem cells, and then the reinjection of these cells. It's not just the technology that's a challenge though. It's going to be a very expensive treatment. These diseases also disproportionately affect people of color, who in many cases have less access to quality healthcare. It's critical to work on both the policy and the technology to make the treatments more accessible. Victoria Gray is the first patient to have received the Cascavy treatment for sickle cell anemia in clinical trials. Signing up to test a new treatment, especially one as invasive as this, is risky. For Victoria though, it was all worth it. Having been diagnosed with sickle cell anemia at just three months old, she used to suffer from tremendous pain. She was in and out of the hospital all the time and couldn't participate in life the way she wanted to. She was forced to drop out of college and quit her job due to the pain. On July 2nd, 2019, Victoria had her bone marrow removed to go through the editing process. Two billion of the genetically modified cells were infused back into her body, and it was successful. This is major for me and my family. You know, two years without me being in the hospital? <laughs> wow. We just can't believe it, but we're so grateful. Victoria is now working, attending school, traveling, and has a new family puppy. I finally get to live a normal life and be happy. It's, it's unbelievable.